What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you had some clear skies to get some images in. As an astrophotographer, I usually get asked, Scott, how do you get these amazing photos? And I usually say something along the lines of, Well, I have a dedicated astrophotography camera and I use an equatorial mount to track the rotation of the Earth. Then I take multiple frames and then stack them to get it, these images. <gasps> awesome. But today, I'm here to tell you, that is a lie. I'd secretly hack into NASA's network, crack their firewall to bypass their login credentials, boot up access to the Hubble telescope, locate my target, and start taking exposures. Then cloak the emails with images and send them back to me. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyways. In today's episode, I'm going to show you what I use to get these images. My name is Scott, and you're watching Cosmic Sandcastles. What's up, you space addicts? What's up, space addicts? Today, I'm gonna to be showing you what I use to image space. We're gonna start from the bottom and work our way up. Let's get into it. Okay, first things first, our mount. If you don't have a good mount and you can't track the night sky, you're gonna get star streaks, star trails, and that's not really what we're going for. What I'm using is the Skywatcher Star Adventure 2i. How this mount tracks the night sky is that you have to polar align it to the North Star. I go over this briefly in another video. You should be able to see a link up here. Another addition that I've added onto my Skywatcher Star Adventure is this right angle polar scope. This helps it so I don't break my back looking down up at the North Star. Whole lot easier. All you need to do is wabamo. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> now that we've done the mount, let's move upwards. Next, we have the AS Air Plus. And you're probably thinking, Scott, what the hell even is that? What is the AS Air Plus? This here is basically the brains of your whole orchestration. It has two USB 3.0 ports, two USB 2.0 ports, four 12 volt DC ports that you're able to power your focuser, camera's fan, light panel, and dew heaters off of. The USB ports can be used for a USB stick, the main camera, a focuser, and a guide camera. The ASI Air pretty much eliminates the need for a computer. And all this is operated off the ASI Air app. Now that you understand the brains, let's move to the limbs. Come over here. Now, we're gonna move over to the camera. And you're probably thinking, Scott, that doesn't look like a regular camera. But it is. It's an Astro camera. Or something like that. This here is the ZWO ASI 294MC Pro. And it has a fan on it that cools the sensor. And what that does is help reduce noise in your image. Noise is the grainy pixels. Go ahead and block your phone and turn the camera on. You'll see all these pixels. That's basically what noise is. The cooler your sensor, the less noise. The cool thing about this camera is that it has two USB 2.0 ports, so you can hook up your guide camera and a filter wheel. I've also added a dew heater on this camera because at one point I got dew on the sensor and I had to toss away a night's worth of imaging. Okay, it's pretty basic. It's just a camera, it cools itself. Let's move on up. Okay, next what I have here is an off-axis guider with a guide camera attached. And what this off-axis guider has is it has a prism inside here and the light coming in shines through that prism and reflects going up to the guide camera sensor. The guide camera tracks onto a star 
and it makes corrections based on how much that star moves. It will communicate with your mount and determine how much it needs to correct. Having a guide camera is a must if you wanna get long exposures. Being able to take longer exposures with your main camera will drastically improve your images. The type of guide camera that I have is a ZWO ASI 174mm Mini. What the MM means is it's a monochrome camera. It's more sensitive to light. Okay, now that you know what a guide camera is in your main camera, let's move on over to the focuser. Now, over here, we have the electronic focuser. This is the ZWO EAF, EAF, sound like that. <laughs> the ZWO EAF. And what this does, it spins this gear to zoom in and zoom out of the telescope. It's not necessarily a need, but I find it a much easier. If I can make astro imaging a little bit easier, I'll do it because there's just so many headaches you run into. So to me, it's worth the money to get one of these. It's pretty basic, pretty self-explanatory. Says it in its name, electronic focuser. So I'm not gonna spend a bunch of time on this. Now that you know what this does, let's move on to the main attraction. Okay, now that you've made it here, you've made it to the boss level. This is my telescope. I'm not gonna get too much into it because this isn't a William Optics review. So I'm just gonna tell you what I know about this. This telescope has a focal length of 250 millimeters. The diameter is 51 millimeters, meaning RedCat 51. This telescope can support full frame cameras and has a focuser just like a camera lens. It's lightweight, portable, and I think it's perfect for this setup. And it has a nice red finish that goes perfectly with the ZWO products. Jumping back to the ZWO products that I didn't mention earlier is the ZWO ASI Air Plus only can be orchestrated with other ZWO products. I'm not sure if they're gonna change this in the future, but I'm happy with all their gear anyways. I recommend it if you're a beginner. And also, I'll be sure to add some links to where you can get all these products. Okay, that's pretty much all I have. This right here is my setup. If you have any questions, please comment down below. I can answer whatever you need to. Clear skies and peace out.